Welcome to 3 Minute Thursday. Uh, what I want to cover this week is I want to go back to the first 3 Minute Thursday that I did, and that's been several months ago now. Uh, we've done uh, several of these, and uh, a lot of you really like them, and I'm, I am excited about that. And the first 3 Minute Thursday that I ever did was on the subject of tattoos, and I've had a lot of people comment on that. It's been viewed around 700 times between Sermon Player and, and our YouTube channel. So I want to go back and revisit that because a lot of people have have sent me comments and asked me questions. Uh, I've had some people say that they don't uh, uh, they won't listen to me anymore because of the stand that I took on that. Um, so I want to just go back and, and touch on it one more time. First of all, the Bible doesn't say much about tattoos. What it does say is in one place, and it's in Leviticus and it's chapter nineteen and verse twenty eight says, do not cut your bodies for the dead and do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. Now, first of all, <clears throat> my pet peeve is when someone takes a verse of scripture like Leviticus uh, chapter 19, verse 28, completely out of context and applies it to every situation. Uh, this is uh, one of the only verses uh, in the Bible that I'm aware of that talks about tattooing your body. In, in order to understand it, you have to understand it the same way that you have to understand the Bible. And that's to take Genesis to Revelation and to get an understanding of who God is and how God works. And, and then when you do that and you read something like Leviticus uh, 19 or you read anything that just seems to be out of place or it, it brings a question to your mind, then you've got to ask yourself, uh, what exactly did God mean here? And, and how do we get to the basis of what God was talking about? Well, number one, Leviticus uh, 19 has to be taken in the context of that entire uh, chapter of what was happening there. And in Leviticus 19, God is dealing with the Israelites, and they've come into a land where they are, they are worshiping idols, and they're doing things that God says you're not to do. So God starts to give them things that they are to do. Look at Leviticus chapter 19, verses 5 through 8. When you sacrifice a peace offering to the Lord, offer it properly so you'll be accepted by God. The sacrifice must be eaten on the same day you offer it and or on the next day. Now, it goes on to describe there how sacrifices are to be eaten and, and at what time and at what point. Well, we don't do that anymore. We would never say that that verse of scripture is relevant to, to what we do today because we don't offer uh, blood sacrifices anymore. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Let's go on. Leviticus 19, 9 and 10. When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your field. Do not pick up the harvest harvesters what they drop. It's the same with your grape crop. Don't strip the last branch of grapes from the vines. Do not pick up the grapes that fall on the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. Folks, that'd be a wonderful thing to practice today, but we don't practice that today, and we don't tell people that that has to be done biblically. Leviticus 19.13b uh, says, Do not make your hired workers wait until the next day to receive their pay. Folks, we would never tell an employer today that they have to give their employees their pay every day as they were. Leviticus 19.19b 19, says, Do not make two different kinds of animals. Make two different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two different kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing worn, woven from two different kinds of thread. Okay, let me keep going. <clears throat> Levit Leviticus 19, 23 through 25, when you enter the land, plant fruit trees, leave the fruit unharvested for the first three years. And then it goes on to say, in the fifth year, you can eat the fruit. Uh, if you follow this, your harvest will increase. Leviticus 19, 27, do not trim off the hair of your temples or, the tr or trim your beards. Now, folks, I have gotten a lot of uh, folks who have said, you know, you're just being ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous. We would never tell anybody today that they have to live by this scripture that you can't trim uh, the hair from your temples or from your beards. We wouldn't do that because we go back and we take that scripture in context and we have to do the same thing when it says marking your body. So here's what I've got to say about this. When it comes to a tattoo, 
I do not find in the Bible where it teaches that you cannot have a tattoo. If we take Leviticus 19.28 and we take it out of the context of that passage of Scripture and say nobody can have a tattoo biblically, then we would have to say that nobody can, can trim the hair from their temples or from their beard biblically. We would never do that because we understand that that has to be taken in context. The same with the marking of the body. Now, if you want to use the argument uh, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and you want to hold people's feet to the fire on tattoos with that, then you better be somebody who doesn't eat uh, sweets, who doesn't drink sodas, who never overeats, who never puts anything in your body that harms you, who has a weight problem. Folks, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and I believe that we ought to do everything in the world in our power to take care of them and treat them as such. They are holy. God has set us apart as holy. I think when it comes to tattoos, it's a question of, why do I want a tattoo? If I'm doing it to be like somebody else, then it's probably the wrong thing. If I'm doing it to, uh, because to me it's a way to share who I am and, and what I'm about, then that's a different item. Remember this. I've always said, uh, you know, number one, if God says uh, don't do it, don't do it. If it's something in Scripture that's not directly uh, addressed, and I don't believe in this situation it is, then you have to use your conscience. If you're a young person living at home, you've got to obey your parents and do that and respect them. Uh, have a great day.